Betty. Let's play through this one time. Let's play through it one time, okay? <laughs> Would you stand together as we sing, please? Let's sing, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed through His infinite mercy, His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, redeemed, redeemed, His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can. I know that the light of his breath. If you need it, it's number 280 in your hymnal. <laughs> redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I have. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent, his love is a theme of my song. shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and bringeth me songs in the redeemed 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 by the blood of the lamb redeemed redeemed his child and forever Find somebody close. Tell them you enjoyed hearing them sing tonight. Okay? Shake their hand. You hear it. made that congratulations go ahead and find a seat if you would you may be seated let's sing together oh how i love jesus there is a name i love to hear i love Sing its word, it sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! Because He first loved me, it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of His precious, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. How I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. I sing the last verse now. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe. In each sorrow bears a part that none can bear me Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. How I love Jesus.
tonight is a wonderful deacon ordination service. There's a little short hymn in our hymnal. It's called the Family Prayer Song. I don't know if the guys, they, they've got the words. I don't know if it has a verse to it or not. But um, it says, come and fill our homes with your presence. You alone are worthy of our reverence. And as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I think that's a great song for a deacon ordination service. Let's try this together. You may not know it. We'll sing it a couple of times just in case you don't. Come and fill our homes with your presence. You alone are worthy of our reverence. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Now would you stand? Let's sing it again. Ushers, you come as we sing. Come and fill our homes with your presence. You alone are worthy of our reverence. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. All right, Father, we're thankful tonight for the reason that we're having this service, which is to ordain uh, a couple of men as new deacons. I pray, Father, this time will be very special, very meaningful. I thank you, Father, for the time of offering. I pray that you'll bless the gift as... Uh, those who give, that we will see it multiplied many times as we literally send money around the world to help missionaries and to help the cause of Christ so that others may come to know him. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for that. If you have your Bible, I want you to open it up to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3. We're going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. Tonight's service is a special one. It is what we call deacon ordination. And a church has two offices according to Scripture, and those offices are actually found in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And the offices um, are what my office would be, the office of pastor and the office of deacon. 
And tonight's service, we are going to be ordaining two new deacons. A healthy church is one that's constantly and continually ordaining new men to be deacons and new men to be pastors. And we're blessed to have Kyle Martin and Nathan Miller here who are going to be rece receiving ordination. So I want to quickly go over our uh, service so you know, all know what to expect. Because I know, I look out in the crowd and I see other ordained men. Whether you're ordained as a deacon or as ordained as a pastor, you have an opportunity to participate in this service. I'm going to give a charge here out of the scriptures and what the Bible says about being a deacon. Then after that, Kyle is going to come forward and take a microphone and he's going to share his testimony of what God's doing in his life. And then after that, Nathan's going to come forward and he's going to share what the Lord's doing in his life. Then after both of these men share, then they're going to sit in these chairs right here, and then you all, if you're ordained, even if it's at another church, even another denomination, if you've received ordination, we're going to create a line right here, and we're going to come by, and we're going to pray over each of these men. Then, after we pray for them, after you pray for each one, you're going to go right over there, and you're gonna, they have their ordination certificates, you're going to sign the back of their certificate. That way, they'll always be able to look back and you, they can see when they were ordained and who prayed over them. I was ordained 18 years ago at First Baptist Church, New Orleans, Louisiana, at a Wednesday night uh, church service. I was ordained there. It was very similar to this. I was sitting in a chair, and the men in that church came and around and I shared, and they came and prayed over me. That was a, a pastor ordination service. So what is a deacon? In a church, we are what we call a congregational-led church. A congregational-led church means at your business meeting, and we do six business meetings a year, you have to have at least, in our, according to our bylaws here, 40 people is our quorum. Next Sunday, it's a business meeting. It's always it's spelled out in the Constitution. It's not the day that we pick. It's always the third Sunday evening of odd months. So this is January, which is a odd month. So next week is the third Sunday eve night, uh, evening service, and we will have our business meeting. So if you are a member of Broadway Baptist Church, you can come and vote in a business meeting. That is what a congregational-led church means. Every member has one vote. So what does a deacon do to that? A deacon, according to the Bible, is someone who serves the church. But being a deacon is, in many churches, particularly in smaller churches, deacons, if you're not careful, they will take over your church. And they can have outsized influence in a church. Here at Broadway, one of the best things we have in our bylaws and a lot of the men, it's hard, but it actually helps you, is every three years, when you're nominated to be a deacon, and we have uh, eight, new, eight guys coming on this month, this new year, to serve, and they are nominated for a three-year time. So they will come on and serve for three years, and then they have to rotate off for one year. So Nathan and Kyle are accepting a three-year assignment here as their first term to be a deacon. When you are ordained as a deacon or as a pastor, that's an ordination for life. So if Kyle moves back to Paducah, and he goes to the Baptist church there in Paducah, and he walks in, he will still be a deacon. He doesn't have to be reordained there at his home church or any church with that. I don't have to be reordained as a minister when I go somewhere else. So this ordination will carry with you all the way throughout your life. And the role of a deacon in a church is one that serves the church. The deacons first arrived in the book of Acts, chapter 6. What was going on? They were having food distribution problems in the early church. Meaning the apostles, the disciples, they were busy doing all of their time serving food. They were doing all this administration work. And in a church, there's lots of administration. There's service opportunities. You can do all sorts of things in a church. And what was happening is the 
uh, widows started complaining because they weren't getting food because there just weren't enough apostles. There was only 12 of them. So what happened was they realized, why are we spending all of our time waiting on tables and serving people food? We need to appoint seven faithful men who will serve this church, this congregation. One of the most important things about being a deacon, this is this cannot be forgotten. This actually serves even for any pastor or any, any deacon. It's not so much about what you do, it's who you are. It's the character. The qualifications for a pastor, the qualifications for a deacon, it's all about your character. It's a, a man who is worthy of his calling. It's a man who is faithful to the Scriptures. You're looking for someone who honors the Lord. And a lot of times we get bogged down and busy with the practical of doing this and doing that. But really, it comes down to it. It's, it's what type of person you are. And that's where we're going to see here in 1 Timothy chapter 3. And the story I always tell, every deacon ordination service. And we've been blessed to have many deacon ordinations here at Broadway Baptist Church. What I always share is when you become a deacon, you are always handed a bucket of, uh, it's, it's, it's in many ways, it's two buckets, one in each hand. So one bucket in this hand of water and one bucket of gas. Because unfortunately, things come up in a church. And I've learned when someone comes to you and you hear something and it just seems out of place, it just seems like that doesn't sound right. That seems fishy. Uh, there's got to be another side of the story to this. Well, you're holding these two buckets, and you can pour gas on that, whatever you just heard, that story, the gossip, the issue, the problem, the concern, the anonym, anonymous letter, whatever it is, you fill in the blank. And then that problem with your bucket of gas, it becomes a much bigger problem. Or you can be someone that's going to pour a bucket of water on that problem and help put it out. And the way to put it out, and the quickest way is to go directly to that person, or if it's about the pastor, you go directly and immediately to the pastor instead of going to other people. And what happens, I want to tell you, in church, your deacons, they will make or they will break a church. Deacons can easily run off pastors in churches. That, that you usually, when you go to a preacher-eater church, you can usually look at your deacon body, and they're, in many ways, a big part of right there, making sure that's a every two- to three-year tenure of a pastor at a church. Not only that, deacons can also find themselves even controlling churches. So even before, in a congregational church, before... Uh, there's any type of vote or people are asked to do something, there has been a political, or not polit maybe not political, church politics moves that have been going on behind the scenes. And you don't want to say it's rigged, but there's been a lot of uh, uh, pre-votes cast and set up to make sure things are taken care of. And that's not, that's not how God's church should be run. God's church is one that is pastor-led and deacon-served and member voted on, congregational-led church. And we see that in the book of 1 Corinthians. The book of 1 Corinthians talks about being a member of God's household, being a member of that church. And being a member of a church is important because you tithe that church, you worship at that church, you serve at that church, you teach Sunday school, you, you minister to other folks. Any capacity, you're taking ownership. Folks need a church home. You need a pastor. You need a deacon. In our church, we do deacon family ministry. Nathan and Kyle are going to be assigned families to them and that they're expected to minister and get to know. You say, how do you know these people? Do you know you can actually look up? You know, we, we use an app called breeze but we're actually changing that this month to a new one we're upgrading it's now about to become subsplash you can look on anyone's name and you can look them up and see who their deacon is and then they that the deacon can look and see who they have my deacon is david homong 
I've been assigned him. The whole Osmond family is assigned to the home laws. Before that, before he rotated back on, it was Keith Gowdy. I mean, you have known over the years, these, are, these men have been my deacons, and they're both here right now. And I didn't even make them or ask them to be here. They came. I mean, they, this is, they're serving their church. So what happens is, uh, when I became a member, back when I mentioned I was ordained at First Baptist New Orleans, I received a letter in the mail from some stranger. I, know, I have no idea who that man was. Some random man wrote me a letter saying, Hello, Daniel. I know we haven't met, but I've been assigned as your deacon. I'm so glad you're part of the church, and I look forward to meeting you one day. I mean, that's literally what the letter said. I have no idea who this man, he didn't know who I was, didn't know who I was. I never even met him. But I'm sure he was there. He prayed over me. Um, it, it was one of those things. The fact that I got a random letter from some stranger knew, even though I didn't know who the guy was, the fact was I knew somebody had been assigned to me, even though I didn't know he was. And that same member care is what we want here at Broadway. And it's one where it's an honor to serve as a deacon. So here's our requirements. I want to say some of you too, some of you have children, you want your boys your sons, your grandsons to grow up and serve as deacons. There's a responsibility as a deacon's wife. You want, your, you want your daughters to grow up and marry a man who's a deacon. A deacon is someone who is faithful to the church. This is a biblical office. It's not something that's just real, that we as Baptists just make up. So let's follow along here in Bible. So here's the one instance of what we would call the qualifications of being a deacon. Remember, a deacon is not what you do. It's who you are. I cannot stress that enough. You can get so bogged down into getting busy, but don't worry about that. It's all about your character. Verse 8, we're in 1 Timothy chapter 3. The first seven verses are the qualifications for my office, the office of pastor. Then we come to verse 8. Deacons, likewise, should be worthy of respect, not hypocritical, not drinking a lot of wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. They must also be tested first. If they prove blameless, then they can serve as deacons. In our church's bylaws, it states, that in order to be a deacon here at Broadway Baptist Church, you have to be a member for two calendar years. Both these men have been members of this church for two calendar years. If you joined this church from another Baptist church and you were previously ordained as a deacon somewhere else, then you only have to be a member here for one year. The reason that is the case is because if you're not careful, you could have someone... Come join your church, and three weeks, four weeks later, they're sitting in your deacons' meetings, and they're, um, I mean, they're doing, they could cause a big mess, and you're like, I don't even know who this man is. I've only known him for four weeks. I haven't, so that's what the Bible's saying. There needs, you need time to actually say, who is this guy? Who is this family? Are they actually faithful in coming, or are they just coming for three or four weeks, and we just, we don't know who they are? So keep going here. Wives, likewise, should be worthy of respect, not slanderers, self-controlled, faithful in everything. Deacons are to be the husbands of one wife, managing their children and their own households competently. Those who have served well as deacons, look at that phrase, served well. That's what a deacon does. Somebody who's managing their home, someone who's holding to the faithful truthfulness of God's Word, the Bible says that they have served well. It's an honor to be able to serve well. Last month, we buried our church. We buried two deacons, Bob Tanner and Don Hassel. Both of those men were ordained as deacons, and they served well. They were here as physically as they were able, were able to. They were at this church as much as they could be here. They were faithful in, in, in holding to the truth of Scripture. For those who have served well as deacons acquire a good standing for themselves and great boldness in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. 
And that phrase there, great boldness, one of the challenges about being a deacon, for I have learned, is how you respond to those uh, fishy situations and unexpected things that come about. And they come about suddenly, and they come out of left field. And that boldness of holding, holding truth, say, okay, before I overreact or make this much bigger than it really is, you have to say, what's really going on here? Is this valid? Is this, is this something that I need to really look into and see maybe there's a possible other side of the issue on what I'm hearing? But one of the things about being a deacon is you will realize it might not happen right away, but one day, Kyle, one day, Nathan, someone's going to come to you and I hate to say it, that it's usually about the pastor. Might, we'll just say, we'll, it might even be about the music minister too. We'll pick on both of us, David. And you're, they're going to say something to you. Won't be this month. It'll be 18, 19, 20 months down the road. Long forgotten about this sermon. Forgotten about your ordination. You're just going about life. And someone catches you in the hallway. Someone sends you an email. An unexpected text message come through. And next thing you know, you're thinking, what what on earth is this? And how you respond, it won't happen all the time, but how you respond to that is what this scripture passage is talking about. Because there's always going to be a temptation to right away believe this person and say, well, I can't believe you were treated that way. I couldn't believe that. But the Bible's telling us we want to be good listeners. We want to make sure here that we are men of integrity, and not only that, we are those that acquire a good standing. And that good standing is to be polite and say, ma'am, sir, thank you for your concern. I'm going to talk to Daniel. I'm going to talk to David about this. I will let them know. One of the other things that tends to happen very frequently, uh, maybe not very frequently, it could be very frequently, some, one day, Nathan, one day, Kyle, someone will come to you And they'll use this phrase, Kyle, people are saying, Daniel, and then fill in the blank, people are saying, do you know who those people are? Have you ever wondered, who are these people? The person who says that, if you ever hear the phrase, people are saying, that's they're the people, because they agree with it. If they didn't agree with it, they likely wouldn't tell you that. But when someone comes to you, and says, people are saying, that's another one of those where you have to think, well, I wonder, there's, I just wonder if that's the full story of what I hear. And I share all these things because it might not even be at this church. These things throughout your deacon journey of many, many decades of service, unfortunately, because the devil works in churches to destroy churches, he will use, always in a, unfortunately, usually in your deacon body, there's going to be a weak link or two. He will find that weak link and he'll go after it to try to create disunity. I'll never forget one deacon's meeting I was a part of. There was an older man, I can now tell the story about Duke because he's in heaven, can use his name. His name was Duke Alcour. And I'm Facebook friends with him, but you can look him up because he's with the Lord. He passed away about five or six years ago. And he was there at First Baptist Church of Moreland. And Duke had a hearing problem. He worked in a glass factory. And he just could not hear very well, or so you thought. We were in a deacon's meeting, and some gossip had come up about someone else. And the chairman asked Duke, Duke, what do you think about this? And Duke said, huh? Huh? Because it was, it was gossip. I mean, what? He would, that's how he would respond. He just, and then he goes, I, I don't know what you're saying. And the gentleman just kept saying, what do you think about this? I, I don't, what? And then he, the chairman got frustrated because we're in a meeting. And Duke's acting like he can't hear what he's saying. Then when it was over, I came up to Duke. Everybody left. I said, Duke. Did you hear what he was saying? Did you understand the question? He said, oh, Daniel, I heard it. And what he was doing, he said, I didn't want to participate in that. I didn't want to give my opinion. I didn't want to talk about it. It didn't even 
that conversation didn't even qualify to be discussed in our deacons meeting. It was just gossip. There was no truth to it. It wasn't a biblical issue. It was hearsay. And that's how he killed that situation. He was a godly man. He was a soul winner. And he was a faithful deacon. And many times in our life, we will be in these situations and we want to always take the high road. And that a lot of times saying, I'm just, this is just not for me. I'm not going to participate in that. Nathan, Kyle, I want you to know you have a charge here from the Bible that we hold these teachings, we hold this scripture true. And it's something for us that we as ordained deacons, ordained ministers, that we hold firmly to the gospel. And this ordination will be one that will continue on all through the decades of faithful service to the Lord. I'm going to pray for both of y'all, and then after that, I believe we're going to start with Kyle. He's going to come up here and we'll grab your microphone, Kyle, and you're going to share. So let's bow our heads. I'm going to pray for both these men and their families. God, I pray for Kyle Martin. I pray that you just mold him into the man you want him to be, making him into a godly deacon who will faithfully serve well here at Broadway and wherever you lead him throughout his life. Lord, I pray for Nathan Miller and his wife Megan Sullivan and Addison, this wonderful family who loves you. I thank you for seeing a godly father, husband, who you've raised up, who's going to be faithful to you in many, many years of service. What an honor to be ordained as a deacon, to see your children, see daddy, follow the Lord. Lord, I pray Sullivan one day, he'll be at a Baptist church getting ordained as well. Lord, I pray both these men will hold to these teachings here, 1 Timothy chapter 8, chapter 3, verses 8 through 13. They will hold firmly to your truth about the role, and not only that, more importantly, the character and the, the aptitude of being a deacon. Lord, we give you Kyle, we give you Nathan. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, Kyle, I'm going to invite you to come on up. thing on it is so pastor daniel asked us to spend a few minutes talking about how god had has worked in our life so here's my attempt at it <laughs> try to be brief but still somewhat substantial i guess um so i grew up in southern baptist churches my grandfather he was a baptist preacher he and my grandmother, they worked at the Kentucky Baptist Convention for a while. So it really wasn't a surprise and it wasn't unexpected to my family that I would profess Jesus at a pretty young age and get baptized. I was around 11 years old, give or take. Um, but I wish I could tell you that I was an ever faithful servant and soldier walking with the Lord in that whole time. But that just wasn't the case. There was a, there was a time of pulling away from Christ and his church and you know living the, the selfish and self-conceited life that naturally leads to hurting other people and digging yourself into a hole but you know thankfully god was working the whole time he was he was working to to bring me back to obedience and, and faithfulness and it several so several years ago just inexplicably and inexorably i was being pulled back to his inscripturated word into the bible and i re i regained my ears to hear and I regained my uh, eyes to see about how man is always ungrateful and rebelling against an ever gracious and ever faithful God um, and how thanks be this God he always joyfully uh, receives back his faithful ones that come back in repentance and in and, uh, and, and contrition so thankfully I came to, to Broadway a few years ago and you guys were welcoming and you accepted me um, and in fits and starts over the last few years I've tried to be a, a blessing in some way doing the small things that I, I knew how to do um, you know, ushering trying to serve on a committee or being a, a, a third-rate backup Sunday school teacher um, <laughs> but you know if tonight's kind of any indication you know I've been kind of called out for an advanced course in some real sanctification and learning how to serve Christ in this congregation. Uh, so to wrap it all up, I just really want to read this verse from the Bible. It's what Paul wrote to, to Timothy in the second letter to him. He's talking of Jesus. 
This saying is trustworthy, for if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Uh, so God is faithful, he remembers his promises, and he remembers our promises. Um, and he's always at work. He works out everything according to the counsel of his goodwill. And even whenever I was faithless so, so those years ago, he, I've heard, as I've heard this, you know, he grabbed me by my baptism and pulled me back. Uh, and so I look forward to serving Christ uh, and his saints here at Broadway. So thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you so much for that. All right, Nathan, you may come on down. Kyle, will you tell me, what, what was your home church? It was in Paducah, right? Lone Oak First Baptist in Paducah. So who's heard of Lone Oak First Baptist Church there? All right, nobody raised their hand. I'm sorry. I actually have that. So come on down, Nathan. So, all right, there you go. My, uh, my testimony is maybe a little more scripted than yours. Is <laughs> not a great public speaker, um, but uh, I'm, I'm excited to be up here with you, Kyle. Um, my name is Nathan Miller, uh, Sullivan, Aniston, Megan. Those are my my kids and my wife. We've been here for about six years. Um, my spiritual Life has not been too climatic. Um, I don't have that large uh, summit, you know. Um, in fact, my Christian te testimony is somewhat dull, I would, I would say. Um, however, what's not dull is Christ's salvation that he's given to all of us. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And what more? exciting as that. I was born into a wonderful family. I had four older siblings. I'm the baby. And two loving parents who feared God and they wanted nothing more than to have their children uh, be, become Christians and followers of Christ. Um, some of my earliest memories of church, uh, four older siblings, but my brother Simeon and Gabriel, they were Shepherds in a Christmas play. Uh, we had a little little church up there in Minnesota. Um, at the age of five, my family and I and a church group, we went to Tuxpan, Mexico. I don't know if you know where that is on the map, but um, we helped build a church. And I remember just playing with some of the little kids and, and realizing that really they had nothing else, um, but they had the Lord. And... That left a, a really big impact on my life, um, planted some seeds. Um, what is important in life is the Lord. At the age of six, my family moved to Snohomish, Washington, um, bounced around a little bit, went to a few different churches, and ended up in Snohomish Free Methodist. Um, between the ages of six and 12, I did pretty much what most of the stereotypical kids do, um, memorized Ten Commandments, Went to VBS, sang in the children's choir, and uh, listened to Adventures in Odyssey. I don't know if you guys know about <laughs> Adventures in Odyssey, but did all that stuff. Um, and then I began attending Awana, um, which is a great program. Um, and from there, I memorized the Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, which is kind of their themed verse. Um, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith. Uh, it is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. Not by works, lest any man should boast. Um, I'm not sure the age I was, but I accepted the Lord there and took the first few steps in acknowledging my need for a Savior. 1998, my family moved here to Wilmore, Kentucky. Um, we went to Great Commission Fellowship. It's a mission-centered church. Um, and between the ages of 13 and 17, we went on several trips to different uh, cities, went to Chicago, went to Atlanta, um, and we went to Tijuana, Mexico a couple times and spread the news there. I was fortunate. Um, 
I also went to LCA. Um, I was fortunate to go to a Christian high school where I learned all kinds of things uh, about the Lord, um, learned theology. Despite all that, um, still a sinner, definitely chief among them. Still fell into temptation and did some things that I should not have done. Um, I don't deserve God's grace. At the age of 18, I met my wife, Megan Green. Um, she was at Lighthouse Baptist Church down in Nicholsville, and we started attending that. A few years went by, and I uh, started attending Anchor Baptist Church here uh, off Man of War with the Sisk family, and I decided to rededicate my life to Christ, and I received believer's baptism there. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. About three years ago, uh, Ray Vasky approached me about becoming a deacon, and I gave it some thought, declined it. Um, since then, I've had a few conversations with some of the other deacons, and definitely gave me some anxiety. Um, I didn't know if I was going to be fit, if I was going to be have enough time for my family. Um, but I had to let them go. I had to let those doubts and fears go. Um, Proverbs 3, 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Um, I'm not 100% sure how this deaconship is going to go. Um, thank you for, <laughs> you know, uh, your, your, your talk and, and, and your words. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, I know that it'll be, bring me closer to the Lord. Thankful for that. Thankful for my family. Um, I'm here to serve. And uh, definitely pray for me as uh, I do so. so. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you so much. That is, that is one. Nathan was born in Minnesota, lived in Washington State, and is now here in Kentucky. Here we are at Deacon Ordination. So it is, so uh, it has, I want to tell you, Nathan's story is one. I was, about, I was in that meeting there. I remember talking to Ray. It was about three, I think even four years ago. We talked to uh, Nathan, and he said no. And um, it, I think um, it, one year you said yes, and then it came back again. So, and then, or we backed out, then it came back. So it has been a long journey. And it's one where being a deacon, I want to reassure you, Nathan, as well as Kyle about this, uh, it's, it really is, you, we are surrounded, our church, many men here at this church have been deacons for decades. In fact, especially at the 845 service, about half, if not more than half the men at that service are either ordained deacon or an ordained minister. We have quite a few here at our church, and we're blessed with that type of godly, long leadership of men that uh, the first... Um, the first couple of years of being a deacon is, is one of just learning and seeing and watching and growing. And that's what's so exciting. And there, there's, in many ways, there's no pressure here at this ordination and this new journey. It's exciting to see what God's going to do. So, Kyle, I'm going to invite you to come sit right here. Nathan, I'm going to invite you to sit right here. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to have what we call the laying on of hands. The Bible talks about how when we ordain people, we are to lay our hands on them and pray over them. So if you are an ordained uh, either deacon or an ordained pastor, even if you're from another church, I'm going to invite you to stand up at this time, and we're going to create a line right here. We're going to create a line, and we're going to pray for each of these men. We're going to lay our hands over them, pray for them. Then you're going to walk over there to the, um, to the little... Uh, uh, forms, the certificates, and you're going to sign the back of those certificates. And then when they're done, what we'll do, and for all of us that aren't in this line, you want to be praying for them as well as their families in the pews. Then, for, uh, then when we're done, I'm going to invite them to stand up. We're going to present them with a gift. And then I'll invite their families to come forward. And then you'll come congratulate them. And that's how we'll close out our service.
don't y'all stand up real quick? Have our Bibles. Y'all can, but y'all can be seated. I was telling Kyle and Nathan to stand up. Y'all get to stand up in a minute here. I'm going to move these back. We're going <clears> to, <throat> I'm going to present them. Nathan, we'll start with you. This here is our deacon ordination certificate, and all the men that just prayed over you just signed it there on the back. So congratulations. So thank you. So with that, so and here's your Bible. So it is. So it is very nice. Congratulations, Nathan. Kyle, again, you see here, this is our deacon certificate. You can frame that, and all the men who just prayed over you signed that. Congratulations. Thank you, Kyle. That is wonderful. There's your Bible as well with that. So it is. We have two wonderful deacons there. I want to invite um, Nathan's family come on up here. So this here is Megan, Sullivan, and Aniston. So they are, Sullivan is in the fourth grade, and Aniston, are you in second grade, first grade? First grade, okay, and they go to LCA, same school Nathan went to, right? So that is, so it is, so, so, and not only that, Megan works at LCA, so it is, this is the LCA family right down the road, so it is a wonderful family there. So what we're going to do is, uh, I want to invite everyone to stand up, so, and I'll tell you this, Kyle, why don't you come scoot over here, and we're going to have a receiving line, you come move over here, if y'all want to put your stuff down, we're going to sing a closing song, David's going to play our closing song, and everyone's going to, we're going to create our receiving line, you're going to come through here and congratulate these families and these two new deacons, and I tell you, even Joey, our outgoing chairman of deacons, saying, Daniel, you just got you two really good new deacons, so thank you for that, Joey, thank you so much, man, that was wonderful. Let's sing together, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. After everybody all that is within me, bless his holy name. this stuff away. This is, these children are the trash, this is trash, this is what this is. We should be, I mean, <laughs> uh, there you go.